John 11 and 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 44, 31 to 45. Are we ready? One, two, go. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked, and he said, There's nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. 45. And it came to pass, in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Israel. All right, before we go any further, now close your Bible. Remain standing. How many of you are ready to pray? How many of you are ready to pray? Very important. You know this is what we always do before I preach. Now, we're going to be praying from Genesis 37, verse 15. The Bible says, talking about Joseph, that a certain man found him. Behold, he was wandering in the field. Please listen very carefully. What is our prayer? You see, a wanderer never gets to his destination. You didn't hear what I said. I said, a wanderer never does what? Gets to his never gets to his destination. It is either he is going round and round in circles, or he has gone in the wrong direction. A wanderer is a man that has missed his way. The enemy has a way of cutting people short. Because he has an idea of your destiny. Do you know many of you standing here? You carry heavy destiny. You are going somewhere. The enemy doesn't want you to arrive. But you must arrive. You will get to where God has ordained for you to get to in life. Amen. Today, you are going to decree that your wandering ends now you will not be a wanderer in this life you decree that you will arrive at your destination and you will arrive quickly i don't think you heard me number one wandering ends now Number two, you will arrive at your destination. Number three, you will arrive quickly. Is that clear enough? Are you sure you understand this? Look, look. I, I've been trying to avoid some words. You know, every time I bring a prayer point, it is, it is, it is out of revelation. There are some words I don't want to use, but I think I better use it to help you understand. I have seen people who were very close to actualizing their destiny and they died just before. 
I was avoiding using that word. In any way, you have wondered in life. Your wondering ends now. Number two, you must arrive at your destination. Number three, you must arrive on time. Do you know I have seen people who are very qualified. They go for, they go for a job. When they get there, they say, ah, I wish you came yesterday. Have you heard that before? Ah, we just gave out the, the contract. I wish you were here last week. There are, there are, there are, there are things. Oh God, there are, I don't want, there are many things that I don't want to say. But how many of you understand what I'm driving at? So there are three important things you want to pray for yourself. Are you ready to pray for yourself? If you're ready to pray for yourself, let me hear an amen like thunder. I said if you're ready to pray for yourself, let me hear an amen like thunder. Amen. Everybody shout it. My wondering ends now. My wondering ends now. I will arrive at my destination. I will arrive at my destination. And I will arrive on time. And I will arrive on time. Open the mouth and turn it to prayer. In the name, In the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. My wondering ends my now. I must arrive at my In destination. The name of Jesus. And I must I arrive quickly. I will arrive at my destination. I will arrive In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you do you understand what you are praying? Do you know? Okay, let me let me say this. Do, do you realize that if that man had not found Joseph, he had already missed his way. He will not know his way back home, and he will not know his way to fulfilling his dream. You, you remember he just had a dream. And the Bible doesn't tell us who that man is. But I can tell you it was an angel. An angel is simply a messenger. It can be a human being. It can be a spirit being. God sent me this morning to tell many of you here and to ask you to declare something for your own life that your wandering ends now. And you must arrive at your destination. And you must arrive on time. Open the mouth and pray the prayer again. In the name, In the name of, of Jesus, Jesus. My Father. My Father. My father. I In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say it again. But I'm just saying it prophetically upon you. Number one, your wandering ends now. Amen. Number two, you will arrive at your destination. Number three, you will arrive on time. If you believe it, let me hear an amen like thunder. Clap your hands and give God the glory. Listen, listen to me. If I have the time, we will have gone into something else, but we don't have the time. If you read that verse, you will discover that the man asked Joseph and said, What seekest thou? And you know what he said? He said, I'm looking for my brothers. The same people who want, who want to kill him. <laughs> they see something so when you meet your helper this week you will know what to say
you didn't hear what I said don't ask for what will not help you ask for what will help you a, a man carrying a dream said he's looking for his brothers I repeat when you meet your helper this week you will know how to ask for the right thing if you believe it let me hear an amen like thunder wave your hand and shout hallelujah if you believe that your wandering has ended today let me hear an amen like thunder if you believe you will arrive at your destination let me hear an amen like thunder if you believe you will arrive on time let me hear an amen like thunder clap your hands and give god the glory i i i want to continue from where i stopped I began to talk about abundance and I told you that if you want to live a life of abundance the first thing is that you must hear it in the spirit did I say that did I say that then I talked about celebrating it did I say that In 1 Kings chapter 18, in verse 42, the Bible tells us that Ahab went up to eat and drink. But Elijah went up to Camel to pray. Everybody said to pray. I can't hear you shout. He said to pray. Now listen very carefully. when you hear the sound of abundance and you have celebrated or you are celebrating the word of abundance then you must go to god in prayer to actualize abundance I don't think they had you tell your neighbor say prayer is the key ladies and gentlemen you cannot see abundance without prayer because the enemy of abundance the enemy of a better life is fighting against that better life and the only way you can break it and stop him is by prayer everybody shout that one again say prayer Isaiah 43 verse 19 God said I will do a new thing in verse 22 God said but you have not called upon me in other words what God is saying is I want to do a new thing but I cannot do it until you call upon me It's in your Bible. In Jeremiah 33, verse 3, God said, Call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. The Hebrew word translated mighty actually means hidden. Great and hidden things. Abundance 
works that is not conspicuous to the eyes abundance that you don't just see do you know most people think wealth is just oil no no oil has been in the ground it took people to discover it i don't think you heard me i mean you think say now you now know now you first know say oil did it a machine that can dig to drill it now you, you will be that we are talking about the world of oil because there are people whom God gave ideas ideas are more important than money it's not money that rules the world. It is ideas. Money comes and goes. Oil will come and go. But ideas remain. God said, I will show you. I will show you. It means it is hidden. Not everybody knows. There are things that can change a common man to a multi-millionaire overnight. I'm not talking about stealing. I'm talking about ideas. Do you see the vacuum cleaner? How many of you, you know the vacuum cleaner? Do you know it was invented by a cleaner in a public school? A man that was employed to clean the floor. He was the one that first came up with the idea. A tire for sofa. To the clean. To the clean. The sofa too much. So somehow he tapped into the supernatural and God gave him idea he was a Christian and that is how he started it with pillowcase and I forgot him with something else and, and that's how it developed and every day every year is developing they have vacuum cleaners now you can operate it by remote do you know that you just stand and you press something. The vacuum cleaner will go by itself and be cleaning. But it started from somewhere. God said, I will show you. As I look into this congregation, I believe that the prayer from this house will make God show you. God will show you what man cannot show you. You didn't hear what I said. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. Raise your right hand and say, Lord, show me. I can hear you. I can hear you. Shout it again. Say, Lord. Show me. Ladies and gentlemen, I was, I was watching. I don't know if it was CNN. Sit down. Sit down. About two weeks ago, I can't remember where I was. I don't know if it's US or South Africa or somewhere. And probably some of you saw it they showed a two-year-old girl 
they were asking her the names of capitals on CNN. They said, Russia was the capital. She said, Moscow. Two years old. <laughs> they were asking her different, the, the, different capitals of different countries in the world. Two years old. The mama said, no, no. I not blame her, Miss Ebno, no. no. <laughs> Miss Ebno, no. Two years. I prophesy on you. People who don't fear God, because of you, they are going to fear God. You didn't hear what I said. I said I prophesy on you. People who don't fear God, people who didn't fear God, People who did not think that there was God or there is God, because of you, they will begin to fear God. If you believe in, let me hear an amen like thunder. If you believe in, let me hear an amen like thunder. There is something God already put in you that should put food on your table. There is a seed of greatness that is within you. I don't care who you are it doesn't matter where you came from there is something within you everybody say Lord show me hey do you believe what you are saying shout it again say Lord show me do you see this building where you are worshiping today i was sleeping one night i'm not an architect i'm not go school seven i was sleeping one night and god showed me i woke up and i called somebody and i said this is what i saw and the gentleman was in the spirit he drew what i saw When he finished, I looked at it. I said, yeah, that's what I saw. And everybody told me, you can't build it. I know a very senior architect in this country who met me in Canada. He said, can I advise you? He said, I'm an architect. I'm a believer. Let me come to worry and redesign it. It can't be built. First, you don't have the resources. I came home and I went to God. I said, this is what this... Then he asked me, he said, is it the one that told you? I said, no. He said, is it the one that showed you? I said, no. He said, decide. I said, I'm on your side. verse 12 what did God say then shall you call upon me now hold on 
in verse 11 God says I know the thoughts that I think towards you thoughts of peace the word peace from the Hebrew when broken down means nothing missing nothing broken I know what thoughts I have or I think towards you thoughts of peace and not thoughts of evil to give you you will get to your destination of Amen. now now then he said then as a result of you knowing the way I'm thinking of you what should you do talk now then shall you call upon me Aha. and you shall go and pray unto me Aha. and I will hearken unto you when you know the thoughts that i am thinking towards you my name is ayana ma don't just sit down and know the thoughts is that now that you know the way i am thinking about you he said then go and pray if you pray based on what you know I will hearken unto you. Everybody say, Lord, show me. Lord, show me. My God, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. Listen, God promised me that out of this service, men and women will walk out of this building touched by heaven. I said, touched by heaven. Something will happen to you that you will not be able to explain Amen. some of you in the next three months you will be doing things you never thought possible Amen. you will find yourself in places you never thought possible Amen. if you believe it let me hear Amen. shout it say lord show me A pastor that cannot pray for up to two hours a day, I'm sorry for you. A Christian that cannot pray for one hour a day, I feel for you. Because what you are doing is, you are living your life to chance. Some of you, you are where you are in life today by chance. <laughs> Somebody else may chance you tomorrow. Your destination is not downwards. Your destination is upwards. Don't live your, la your life on chance. You know, in those days, there was a song. Whatever will be, will be. If whatever would be, should be. My dear, I'm sorry for you. Because what wants to be, not be good thing, no. There are many bad things that want to be. You have to find a way by prayer to control them. Drive away bad things and pull good things by your prayer. What of life are you with me? Are you sure you are with me? If you are with me, let me hear an amen like thunder. Amen. Mm -hmm. How much time do you spend to pray? He said, he said, Pastor, they pray for me. That's good. But don't forget the Bible says, if, if two shall agree. If I'm praying for you and you're not praying for yourself. 
it means we are not in agreement I am praying for you you are living on chance Wait, there's a problem your prayer and my prayer have to meet somewhere they have to be connected somewhere in the spirit realm there are Christians who go from prophet to prophet looking for answer and the answer is in your hand many have roamed everywhere without finding anything I told you earlier I said your days of wandering have ended today no more wandering no more wandering no more wandering spend at least one hour a day to talk to your God are you still with me I will come back to you later ladies and gentlemen prayer is the key prayer makes what was hard to become soft prayer makes what was difficult to become easy prayer makes what was impossible to become possible the God we serve hears and answers prayers there are prayers you prayed many years ago I will get to that in a moment and you thought it was lost Jerry read Revelation 5 verse 8 let us see what is there Revelation chapter 5 and verse 8 and when he had taken the book the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb the four beasts and the twenty elders fell, fell down, down before the lamb before the lamb having every one of them harps every one of them had harps and golden vials and golden vials full of odors full of odors which are the prayers of saints uh-huh every prayer you have ever prayed that you thought was lost has been collected Amen. God gathers them they are not lost I have come to tell you today that if you have been praying don't stop praying if you have not been praying begin to pray because the God we serve he hears prayers he answers prayers yes, sir. we don't serve a dead God we serve a living God he is the same yesterday he is the same today he is the same forever yes. if you believe it wave your hands out yes, yes. everybody say Lord show me show me show me Lord show me show me show me show me show me Lord show me show me clap your hands and give God glory hey I see in the spirit I see lives being changed Amen. This week, many of you, you will encounter what will change your life. Amen. This week, this week, this week, this week, this week, this week. Oh my God, I feel the anointing of a spirit in the house. Mm -hmm. But, but, but look, let, let me digress again for a little time like I do all the time. The greatest hindrance to prayer is sin sin s-i-n sin is the greatest hindrance to prayer there are people living on chance and they actually think god is answering their prayer but they are going to get stuck somewhere jerry they're going to get stuck if you read proverbs 28 verse 9 the bible says he that 
upon it his ears from hearing the law even his prayer is an abomination if you refuse to hear the word of god proverbs 28 verse 9 if you refuse you turn your ear from it you know there are people here with me in this hall now who have tuned their ear from what they are hearing they are hearing but they are not hearing and god says when you when you turn your ears from hearing the law he said even the prayer of that man is an abomination in fact what that means is god is angry with you that you even prayed he was a little bit angry before but the anger grew higher he got more angry or got angrier because you prayed because the point is if you cannot listen to me why should i listen to you oh word of life i don't think you are hearing me god is saying if if you cannot hear me why should i hear you in psalm 66 verse 18 david said psalm 66 verse 18 david said if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me now watch this you have not even committed it yet <laughs> david said just to regard it what's the meaning of the word regard eh? to have it in your heart to imagine it to give it a prominent place in your heart you have not even done it david said if i can imagine it god will not hear me it is the bible it is the bible god answers prayers of if anybody tells you it's not true tell them to watch your life you are going to be the next testimony that i will be sharing here Amen. i was preaching at a conference in london this was about five years ago and in my usual way at the end i did something very unusual you want to know what i did i said to everybody I said for the next one year every 12 midnight wake up to pray for one hour <laughs> I don't know why I said it I said for the next one year Richard, after I said it when I left there I asked myself how, you? how can you do this kind of thing and God said I put it in your mouth I went, I went back for the same conference two years later. Two years later. Everybody said two years later. Two years later. Before I preached, they made sure I was seated. Before I preached, they brought a woman with a baby. She was dancing. So I said, what happened? She said, two years ago, she was in the service. When I said, for the next one year, every 12 midnight, wake up to pray for one hour. She said, I have been trying to get pregnant for the last nine years. She said, for eight months, for how many months? Every 12 midnight, I will wake up to pray for one hour. I didn't know. Probably it was because of her that I said it. She said, I, I continued like that for eight months. She said, after the eight months, I discovered I was pregnant.
I prophesy on you that any prayer you pray after today, the God of heaven, the one who answers prayer, will answer you in the name of Jesus. People may look at you and think you are stupid. They may look at you and think something is wrong with you. Tell them thank you. Your prayer is not lost. I said your prayer is not lost. Your prayer is not lost. Prayer is the key. But sin is a hindrance. It's a problem. It's a problem. Now, now. You see, the reason I'm emphasizing this issue of your life is because abundance does not come from man. Man can, God can use man. But abundance comes from God. That is why in John chapter 3, verse 27, John 3, 27, Jesus said, A man can receive nothing except it is given to him from heaven. From where? From where? Heaven. From where? From heaven. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what it says, Jerry? Yes, sir. Read it so that they know I'm not lying. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. John said, A man cannot receive anything except he is given from where? Heaven. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13, the first part of it, God said, when heaven is closed and there is no rain, there is no abundance. When heaven is closed and there is no rain, in verse 14, he said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. pray. is the key in Luke chapter 3 verse 21 the Bible says in Luke 3 21 that as Jesus was praying the heavens open. how can you be living your life under closed heavens In the name that is above every other name. Jesus Christ, the son of a living God. The God who made heaven and earth. The God who sent me. Who called me. Almost 40 years ago. To preach this gospel. I stand on this platform. And I declare to you. That the hour has come. That heaven must open. Amen. That heaven must open. Amen. The God whom I serve is a God that opens the heavens. Amen. When you call upon him, whatever has held your heavens, I said when you call upon him, heaven is going to open for you. Amen. When you call upon him, heaven is going to open for you. Amen. That devil is a liar. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a living God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. That devil is a liar. Your heaven is about to open. 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 If you believe in shout, yes! Hey! Why should you be living on that close heaven? Prayer will fix it.
clap your hands and give God the glory I feel something in the air that devil is a liar the time for your heaven to open has come Amen. whatever has been holding your heaven Amen. it will not hold it anymore Amen. the day for open heaven has come Amen. everybody say Lord open my heaven shout it again say Lord There are some of you in this audience you have questions in your heart you are wondering god why he said i should tell you to drop the why Amen. he said look up to heaven Amen. david said i will look up to the hills from where cometh my help my help cometh from the lord the maker of a heaven and earth if you believe it let me hear another amen like thunder Your prayer is not lost but I, I want to show you I want to start something today that I can't finish but I will just start I want to show you the principles of open heavens in first John chapter 5 first John chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 first John 5 and 14 and this is the confidence that we have in him uh -huh. that if we ask anything according to his will uh -huh. he heareth us verse 15 and if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him now now i, w I want to dwell on these two verses but i'm going to just do a little something today the first part of that first verse verse 14 the bible says this is the confidence that we have in him what does confidence mean confidence mean with certainty to know without a shadow of doubt that's the meaning of confidence in other words we know without a shadow of doubt ladies and gentlemen if you want your heavens to open when you pray pray without a shadow of doubt i am not saying you will not face contradictory circumstances i'm not saying you will not see things that contradict what you are praying about but i'm saying pray with certainty pray knowing that no matter what at the end of the day you will get your answer in other words begin your prayer knowing in your heart that you have already gotten the answer i don't think you heard me I heard you sir i'm taking my time to talk like this because i wanted to sink when you start the prayer begin the prayer from the first prayer from the beginning when you start the prayer start the prayer knowing in your heart that no matter what happens god will answer this prayer it doesn't matter what is happening around you this is the confidence we have in him If you look at Psalm 27 verse 3 David said If a host come pass about me and war rises up against me <laughs> in this will I be confident in what you have to go to verse 1 go back to verse 1 look at where his confidence is he said the lord is my light and my salvation 
Whom shall I fear? Nobody. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? <laughs> so when, when David was praying that prayer, he was praying it based on this confidence. That the Lord who is your light will not allow darkness to overwhelm you. Amen. The Lord who is your salvation, the word salvation means solution. The Lord who is your solution will not allow problems to overwhelm you. Amen. Everything may look impossible, but the God who is your light, the God who is your salvation, the God who is your strength, the strength of your life, the one that watches over you in the day and in the night, the one that makes sure that your enemy cannot consume you in the name that is above every other name, the son of a living God. I stand as a prophet of God and I declare to you, this is my confidence. I don't know your confidence, but I know my confidence. This is my confidence. The devil is a liar. No war rise up against me. This is my confidence. We serve a mighty God. This is my confidence. If you believe it, let me hear an amen like thunder. Philippians 1 6 Paul said I am confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work everybody say I am confident you say I'm confident. I'm confident the devil is a liar wait a minute 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 in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 14 the Bible says we are made partakers of Christ if there is an if there yes sir when the Bible says we are made partakers, it means everything that Christ is and Christ has, you are supposed to. We are made partakers of Christ. If we hold fast to the beginning of our confidence until the end. That means when you start praying, if it takes three months, hang in there. If it takes one year, hang in there. But you know that you know that you know that you know that you know. If you look at First Kings chapter 18, you now look at verse 43. The Bible tells us, aha, uh aha, -huh, aha. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The Bible says Elijah told the servant to go and look. And he says, what do you see? He came back. He said, I see nothing. He said, go again. He said, I see nothing. He said, go again. He said, I see nothing. He said, go again. He said, I see nothing. Four times. He said, go again. He, the, the man was, he said, this man is crazy. What kind of thing is this? Nothing dead there. What kind of wild be this? He said, go again. Why is he telling him to go again? Because he is Say to your neighbor, I know without a shadow of doubt. I don't think they heard you. Say it again to your neighbor. I know without a shadow of doubt. Without a shadow of doubt.
I have Sit down for a minute. I want to close, but I must, I must put this on you and then bless you. My God. After one month, I have come with a fresh oil. Mm. God said I should tell you. Many of you in this audience, there are things that you used to touch that could not produce. This week, they will produce for you. Amen. I want to hear testimony, so don't hide it because things are going to start happening. I spread it around the building. I spread it in the gallery. Amen. I spread it in, in on those in the basement. Amen. If you are with me, let me hear a name like thunder. Amen. In Second Kings. Chapter 18, verse 19. The king of Assyria said to King Hezekiah, I'm going to put it in my own words. It's the last part of that verse. He said, what kind of confidence is this? He said, in whom do you trust that you are so confident? Then he began, he began to abuse Hezekiah's God in a letter. He said, your nonsense God. I have been here, I conquered them. I have been there, I conquered. Did you see it there? Did you see it there? Uh, in, 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 in verse, uh, what, what verse did I say? Verse 19, it's there. 18, 19, don't worry, don't read it, but it's there. The last part of that verse. But, but the letter continues. He, he, he was talking nonsense. He said, I went to this place, I defeated them. I went to that one, I defeated them. I went here, I defeated them. He said, who is this your God? I'm cutting it short of. In chapter 19, verse 14, King Hezekiah took the letter, Ogbelosi altar. Those who want to fight you, they are, they are fighting this altar. Have you seen it in, in chapter 19? Yes, sir. Verse 14. Yes, sir. King Hezekiah. Well, read it, read it, read it, Jeremy. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messenger. He received the letter. He received and read it. it. And he read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord. Uh -huh, now so. And spread it before the Lord. Uh, now so, now so, now so. Hear me. Who can defeat God? The man said... Ezekiah, what is this your confidence? Now God, now God, now God, I not get you, you. There is no witchcraft involved. I promise you, as the father over this house, in the next 15 days, many of you will return with your testimony. Amen. I receive it. I receive it. I said you will return with your testimony. Amen. If you believe it, let me hear an amen like thunder. Amen. Please hear me very carefully. Listen, listen. In verse 35, Ezekiah had spread the letter. Amandela Saida. He spread the letter before God. Because it was not Ezekiah the man was writing to. He was writing to God. Don't you know that God can reply? God goes good too. It's a be right letter. So in verse 35, God replied the king of Assyria. But instead of putting his own in writing, he sent an angel that same night. Express mail DHL. The Bible says that same night an angel entered the camp of the king of Assyria. One angel killed 
85,000 warriors. The Bible says when they woke up in the morning, 85,000 men were dead. The men that he was depending on. When you do what I've told you to do today, God is going to take from your enemies whatever they are depending on. Amen. You will take it. You will see with your eyes. Some of you in the next 15 days, some of you here in the next three months, you will see with your eyes. He will take it from them. 85,000 died in one night. In verse 36, the Bible says the king of Assyria turned back <laughs> and he returned home the same way that he came. The, the same road when they pass, come meet you. Now that same road, now they go turn past, take go. Amen. Amen. In verse 37, this is God's reply. Oh. In verse 37, the Bible says, when he got to the house of his shrine to go and report back of what has happened he didn't know that the letter has not had full stop yet when you write letter you're not going to put full stop yes sir it didn't never end so while he was inside the shrine the angel with the reply was still moving the angel entered the hearts of two of his sons they entered the shrine and they killed him. Then the letter now had full stop. Lift your two hands up. Shout it, say, Lord! Lord! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! Shout it, say, Lord! Lord! Let your altar let your altar fight for me fight for me I cannot fight this battle alone I cannot fight this battle alone let your altar let your altar fight for me open your mouth and turn it to prayer turn it to prayer turn it to prayer let your altar fight for me my God let your altar fight for me Jehovah let your altar fight for me I cannot fight this battle alone. Let your altar fight for me. Let your altar fight for me. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your altar fight for me. 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 We hope that you've been blessed by Pastor Ayo with his beautiful teaching and preaching during the hour of deliverance. If you have need for a special prayer, our counselors are waiting to pray with you or call any of the numbers listed. We encourage you to be a part of our church family at Word of Life Bible Church in Warren. Our ministry needs your support and prayer and your financial assistance. Your gift will be used to spread the Word of God throughout our country and to the world. Please write to us at Post Office Box 2088, Warren, Nigeria. 